Are you tired of bringing your car to have the wheels bounce only to find out that once you hit the highway, your car's shaking like the butts at a 70s Elvis concert? Stick around, I got an idea. So in today's video, we're gonna be going over using a uh, Pittsburgh portable wheel balancer. Now, this is not an actual review for this unit, though we will review how it works, and I'm gonna show you how to use it. We're gonna see if it actually works and if I can make this unit work better than a teenage kid at a local chain store. Okay, so let me help better explain myself. Uh, I'd say it was about six months ago, I had a brand, a brand new set of wheels and tires put on my car, had them balanced and everything and they weren't balanced well and so about three weeks ago i got sick of it and brought it back and said you know what i need to have these rebalanced they are just it's awful they are shaking all over the place and i waited about two and a half three hours i had them rebalanced i left uh, the next day i noticed that my wheels were still shaking now the problem was they don't start shaking until about 55 miles an hour and i never got above 50 miles an hour on the ride home so i didn't notice uh, where this is a problem, how this relates, is that obviously you can tell the annoyance of sitting for two and a half hours and having to go back to do it all over again is not just a pain, but I would say that management's not teaching these younger guys and girls how to do a correct job on balancing. Now again, how that fits into this video is we're going to take that little tire balancer and we're going to see if we can beat an installation guy at one of these big chain stores by spending a simple $80. Now, there's a couple different ways to do this and I'll get into that but first I want to take the car a little bit of drive and I'm going to show you exactly what the steering wheel does uh, to give you an idea of exactly what I'm dealing with so bear with me as I ease into traffic here we'll pull out here just in a second okay so as we're rolling we should be uh, shaking somewhere right around 50 to 55 so let me get up to speed and you'll kind of get a better idea here I don't know if you can see that. I'm trying to hold it stiff to stay on the road, but it's shaking all over the place. It's 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 really bad. Um, and again, this is just something that I know a lot of you have dealt with in the past, and you'll notice that that starts at 55, and once it gets up to closer to 70, it's pretty violent. So going down the highway, uh, you would think a nicer vehicle like this probably should ride pretty smooth, uh, but unfortunately it doesn't, and that's not due to the manufacturer, that's due to the people that put on the tires. So let's get back to the shop and we'll talk about exactly what we're going to do as far as making this thing better than it is. Alright, so some of you are probably asking yourselves right now, well how the heck are you going to compare a ten or $15,000 name brand machine like Coats or something to this little $80 portable wheel balancer? Well, technically speaking, I'm not. So this isn't so much an issue of... Uh, will the little one do as good as the big one? Because it can't. It's not possible. So it can't speed balance and dynamic balance like a large uh, electronic machine can do. However, this is more so me versus the smaller guy that maybe is not trained at the big store. So let's go ahead and move forward. Let's get this box open and see what's all inside it. All right, and opening it up, just like so, cut like so, cut like so. Alright, here's our main unit here, as we can see, let's unwrap everything, so that's our main balancer with our leveled eye right there, let's keep going down in the box, see what else is inside here, got our user's manual, we're definitely going to want to take a look at that because i got to make sure that I'm doing it correctly, we have our, what looks to be our base, right there, and what I guess to be the pull that holds it up here in the container. Let me go ahead and throw this thing together. I'll show you what it looks like and we'll read the instructions together. Okay, so here is the balancer all assembled. It is really simple. Uh, we're just basically putting the nut on this side, putting it on the other side, tightening it down, and then making sure you center this on the little pin point that it comes with. Now, it has a little bubble balancer on the top right here. And one thing you do have to remember is some people, if you look at reviews, will say that this thing is off balance or came perfect. And the reality is that that depends on the floor you got it set on. If your floor is at an angle, it's not going to be perfectly balanced. And all you got to do to balance this thing, let's say it's off a little bit on this side, we want to go ahead and tighten these two bolts on this side right here to get that thing to a perfect level before we get our wheel on it. Once we get our wheel off, we'll pop the cap off and center it perfectly on this thing, and we'll see how it lays. So give me a minute to get this thing uh, recalibrated, and we'll get a wheel on it. Okay, so I actually have some metal plates I went ahead and set it on to make sure it's as level as it can get. Keep in mind that if you're in a garage, you probably have some sort of slope because it's always going to run towards the door. So as if you had water, water would run out. 
that's naturally the way it's set up. So you're probably gonna have to do a little bit of adjustment on this. I was actually wrong. Um, you don't adjust it from the bottom, I thought you did. You have to adjust it by these tiny little screws right here. And you'll see that my bubble, if you can see that, is in perfect position. So what I need to do now is I need to get one of the front wheels off my vehicle and set it right on the top. Okay, so I got my wheel off. It did rain last night, so the wheels need to be dried before we try this. We gotta make sure that they're completely dry so the weights will stick to them. Uh, this wheel in particular was kind of difficult to get off because of its massive caliber. Um, I will say for those of you that have air suspension in your vehicle, make sure you use the right uh, instructions as far as making sure your vehicle's air system is disabled before you go and lower it. You don't want to hurt yourself or the vehicle. Okay, and so with the wheel off, I went ahead and turned it over because I want to inspect what kind of weights were put on it before. And if I look, look at the sheer amount of weight in that. That is absolutely ridiculous. So this could be a situation where it may not be even the technician's fault. Maybe the wheel is got a lopsided wobble to it. I don't know, but that is a lot of weight to have the inside face of a wheel. Now they did do what's called a dynamic balance, which means that they'll put a weight on the inside of the wheel and the outside of the wheel, the face of the wheel, and that gives you a more clear balance for both sides of the wheel. Unfortunately, this little thing here can't do that, so we have to go with the static weight, which is usually in the center somewhere. So I will try to clean it up, and uh, I'll show you exactly how we do this uh, balancing. Okay, so now I have everything lined up perfectly on our wheel balancer, and I'm going to show you the wheel itself. It's almost perfect, but if you can see, it's just a smudge towards me right here. So what we want to do is we want to take a strip of weights. We know that we're going to be putting them on the inside of the wheel here, so we want to get it as close to where we're going to be putting them. So I just take the strip, and I'll lay it towards the area that's off just a hair, and I want to look at it again. And if you can see that, that looks like it's about perfect. So I need to go ahead and put a mark on the tire here. I'll use a piece of chalk so I know where I'm at, or at least remember the area that you're putting it on. We're gonna go ahead and stick these on the inside of the wheel. Now, for me, I'm gonna stick these behind the face of it only because that's the closest I can get. That's how I'm measuring it right now. I don't wanna put it way on the back side of the wheel because that may throw things off. So in this particular scenario, if I was to show you where the old wheel weights were, we have some way back there, and the big section of them is actually over here. This is actually called counterbalancing. And this for me was in growing up doing this was always a big no-no. And you'll see that a lot of times uh, people are doing this now and the reason why is they use less weights. So I'm gonna do that for you guys now to show you guys how that works, but that is really not the best way to do it. A lot of times it doesn't even work. So unfortunately, because you're saving wheel weights, that's kind of the same reason that dealership is. So let's go ahead and move forward. I am going to uh, put these weights on, we'll get it cleaned up, and uh, we'll see what it does. Okay, so let me start by saying this is not typically the way I would want to balance these wheels, but because of the sheer amount of weight that's already on them, I don't know that I'll be able to get these things balanced uh, with the balancer that we have. I think there might be something more behind this. However, um, we're going to move forward doing it this way because this is probably the only way I'm going to be able to do it. Um, again, the, the really the right way would be stripping all the weights off and starting from fresh and you'd be putting those weights dead center in the middle of this wheel. Uh, again, in this particular situation, because we're dealing with all these weights, we're going to go ahead and do this uh, and we'll find out if it works after our test. So it's, it, this video is getting posted either way, whether it works or it doesn't. Uh, but you'll see, I went ahead and put a uh, chalk mark in the front of the wheel and then this is the matching chalk mark here as to the center of where these need to go. All you need to do is take some basic rubbing alcohol like so in a rag and wipe this thing clean, let it dry, make sure that there is no moisture there. And then we're gonna go ahead and peel off the back of our sticky weights and apply them right here. Now, these sticky weights are from Harbor Freight as well. I don't necessarily recommend these because they don't stick very well. Um, that's the reason I'm just, I don't mind throwing these on here and losing them because, well, they don't really matter to me. But go ahead, throw these weights on. Let me, uh, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so here's our second wheel. You'll see that we have our weights on it, which is less weight than I had before, and our mark. And you'll see that the bubble is perfectly centered. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna put these weights on. We're gonna throw them in the car. We're gonna take it for a test drive and see if it did anything good or bad. All right, so the wheels are both back on and torqued down. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and lower the vehicle here. We are gonna take this thing on a run and see what it does. All right, guys, so I'm about to take a test drive right now. We have a storm that just came in, so I'm trying to wait for the rain to kick out so we can obviously be safe and do this with a camera. Um, I just want to let you know there is two different types of uh, vibrations. You have a vibration in your steering wheel, which is indicative of your front wheels, and you'll have a vibration that would be coming through the floor, through your butt or your feet, and that's indicative of the rear wheels. Now, I've only done the front wheel, so I don't suspect that the rear wheel shake will be gone, and yes, I have all four. Um, but my hopes are that the shaking in the steering wheel will be dramatically reduced, if any at all. So I'm waiting for this rain to die down, and then we're going to run out there and see, uh, see what the outcome is. 
All right, guys, so we're back in the car. We're taking a test drive. Now, I don't necessarily have 100% confidence in this because we did counterbalance, and that sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't. So if it doesn't, it's okay. We'll strip all the weights off and we'll try it again. But I have a feeling that we might be okay. Uh, we're gonna find out right now. I just gotta get to the right speed zone. Well, look at that. There is no shake. Wow, that actually worked even counterbalancing, that's unbelievable. I feel a very tiny amount, um, hardly nothing, and it feels like it's from the road, but way better than it was. Uh, I'm pretty impressed, I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know how well it would work, but for 80 bucks, I mean, you really can't go wrong there for that, uh, but the reality is I think I just won. I think that's what this video is about. You know, for those of you that are dealing with this headache and these guys can't get your wheels right, you can do it yourself for 80 bucks, plus whatever the weights are. Again, I would suggest using different weights, but nonetheless, you could use whatever weights you choose. So I hope this video was informative to you guys. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, definitely throw that thumbs up. And if you haven't already, uh, subscribe because we got a lot of cool content coming up. There's a couple more builds that are coming up. I think you guys are really gonna like. I'll talk to you in the next one.